the talk the topic of my talk is towards the successful completion of a doctoral program not to there's a lot of difference to words and not to why because when it's to words it's an equal effort from both the sides i take a step then the student takes a step and again then i take a small step and the st a student takes so i'm going towards her not to i don't want to reach to her because that is going to be a very one sided affair and that's exactly what i don't like one sided affair where i do not get reaction i do not get response i do not understand what is going on towards the successful completion of a phd journey phd is the highest academic degree that you can ever get there is no degree which is beyond phd of course there is post doctoral but it's not a degree it's more like something that it's more like a job you know so phd is the highest academic degree phd is a journey along with your guide you have to you are married to the guide and i'm sure as the you know students who have previously complete you have we previously spoke devki she said that you have to trust your guide i mean trusting somebody you don't know doesn't happen immediately it takes time from both the sides right i'm giving a little generic talk i haven't made my ppt but i think you have had enough of presentations and slides more philosophical experiential talk that i'm giving you right so it has to be hand in hand prioritizing that now this person is somebody that i have to stay along with for the rest 5 years 7 years 10 years i did my phd and it took me 7 and a half years sade sat sade sati even devki took 7 years but i am representing representing the stem areas what are sense stem areas science and technology okay i am a stem cell biologist i did my phd from national center for cell sciences it took me 7 and a half years to finish my phd why will it take me the same amount of time there a lot of questions which must be popping in your mind but let me tell you each one of you is different each one of your guide is different if i have taken seven and a half years you may finish in 3 years in germany most of the students finish their phd even in stem areas doing in doing laboratory work or what you say bench work they finish in 3 and a half years so it is going to differ from country to country from university to university okay from guide to guide from student to student so there is no comparison phd journey it's a process that you are actually you have to compare yourself with yourself what was i 6 months ago what am i today okay you have to understand just like minister ji said uh, singh uh, singh ji uh, said that even if i after i attain this i am going to be i am going to walk out as a wiser person so in 6 months you are going to be wiser you are going to understand okay but again the question is the topic of my top i'm digressing a little bit but i need to give this background before i can probably give you okay not in priority priority okay not in order maybe it will not work for you maybe it will work for her so the i don't have any magic formula that what are what are the d steps that you need to please your guide okay for the successful completion of your doctoral program there is no one rule there is no one formula and even if i try to give you some formula it may not work you might go and say that what was she talking it's not worked with me you have to modify or make your own formula that is after understanding that do i need to go through this process see each process is difficult all of us have gone through schools and colleges and we had our own tough time but phd is something like a road block no i don't want to do it you know i'm going to waste my time or probably i'll nothing will come out of it oh the publication so i have to run at the tune or or run at that or dance at the tune of my uh, uh, you know uh, guides uh, comments but please understand the first thing that you have to do is find within yourself that do you have that capacity inclination passion 
to start with the journey of PhD. Do you want to do it? Yes. Okay, I will assume that all of us sitting here are yes. Okay, because I want to speak positively. <clears throat> Second is, then you have to understand or you have to get to understand your gu guide psychology. You have to get at, a, at par with her. For my students, the moment they come, I, tell, I, they, I give them that leeway. I tell them, six months I am not going to disturb you. Six months you are going to be in the lab. You are going to get to know the other PhD students, the setup of the lab, <clears throat> what are the important uh, uh, aspects of function of the lab, the basic minimal techniques, the processes, the course, whatever they are doing. Six months I don't bother them, okay? But I do give them a homework. I tell them just one thing, tell me in what area that you want to work upon, okay? Now, Dr. Patil spoke about a uh, ta topic and title. So I tell them topic, which is much more generic, okay? Because even within the field of, uh, say, uh, cell biology, do you want to work in this kind of cell or that kind of cell? Or do you want to look at, uh, uh, you know, a group of cells? I'm just giving an example. That becomes your topic, but that is not your title. Because when I say that whether you want to look at a specific protein within a cell, that becomes your title, okay? I give them that leeway and then after six months, I start understanding, I tell, I have already told them that you have to do a lot of re review of literature. See, review of literature is a process that I'm still doing. Review of literature doesn't end with your PhD or it's not that six months I do a review of literature and then that's it. I, I, you know, I don't want to do any review of literature. It's a process because once you are, com you come into the realm of PhD, you are, you know, you are, uh, basically, uh, 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 you, you are learning the process of re research, okay? You are becoming, becoming a budding researcher. Ultimately, you are going to bud off from your guide. You are going to be an independent researcher, and then you should be able to, able to guide a new team, your own team of researchers. So you have to keep reading, you have to keep reading. Reading is a process to understand where is the lacunae, what is the lacunae, can I give can I ask the right questions? Very important point which was made by, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get your name, yeah? Jyoti, very important po point. We are, when, when the most important aspect of PhD is not finding the right solutions first. You will find the solutions only when you have the right questions, okay? So first thing is you should be able to ask the right questions because that is important for you for even to understand that what is going to be my process. If you ask the long, wrong questions, and trust me, this has happened, I've seen my peers going through it, okay? Wrong questions, at the third or the fourth year of PhD, you understand, oh, I have asked the wrong question. So you go back to the first year, and then again you start, then you end up spending a lot of time, okay? So right questions. Right questions will help you making in framing your right objectives. Right objectives will help you in planning the right experiments or process within the objectives, right? And then you will start getting ticks on your boxes. You will start seeing a vertical story. Every PhD, whether it is STEM, non-STEM or whatever the area, it is going to have a story. You need a story, okay? So there is a story, when you, when, you, when you defend your viva or your PhD viva, you tell your story that how did I go and ultimately what is the significance of your PhD and how are you adding towards that knowledge generation. Because tomorrow <clears throat> if I read your PhD thesis or even if I read the paper which has come out or research paper or original research paper rather which has come from your PhD thesis, Will I be able to contribute towards it more? <clears throat> Vidya Madam just spoke about knowledge generation and application of that knowledge or research from symbiosis towards the, uh, at a translation level to the society. <coughs> so how is my knowledge go or the knowledge that I'm creating in my laboratory, how is going to benefit the society? <coughs> Suppose I'm working on a drug or I found a novel drug. I'm giving an example or a novel molecule, chodo drug, Dr drug is more complex. <coughs> Sorry, can I get a bottle of water? Yeah, so if I'm working on a molecule and that molecule as suppose has an anti-cancer property <coughs> and I'm able to 
show that in the laboratory, in animal studies, is it going to the clinical trials? Am I able to take it to the clinical trial level? Thank you so much. Thanks. <coughs> yeah, I'll manage. Okay. So, and after the clinical trial, am I able to collaborate with an industry so that the industry may, may be able to refine it or <coughs> do some more trials and then bring it out to society? Industries take 15, 20, 50 years sometime to get a drug out. Okay, this is again, I'm talking with respect to STEM areas, okay, which is science and technology. So that these are very, very important questions. <coughs> Secondly, you mature with your PhD, uh, with your PhD journey, not only in your technical skills, in your understanding, in your problem solving abilities, but also tackling the problems and having a backup for it. Very important uh, thing, I mean, very important, uh, uh, I mean, aspects which happen in my, within my uh, 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 institute. We don't have a, probably, a, a, what do you say, a <coughs> sorry, a machine. Suppose, okay, I want to use something which is known as confocal microscopy, which is a very high-end microscopy. And it can tell me exactly the molecule sitting on the cell organelles give me almost very high magnification. I don't have it, but I need to apply. I, I need to do it. How do I do? I collaborate. I collaborate, okay? So collaboration is one more thing which your guide or your PI is going to teach you. Collaborate. For collaboration, collaboration has to begin in the laboratory or in the lab or in any setup, whether even if you're not working in the lab. Just like, again, what was mentioned previously, you must have good rapport with your uh, colleagues because you never know who helps you when. So you need to learn the art of collaboration. Now, why collaboration is important, like, for example, if right now you're doing PhD, but you're not employed, right? You're a full-time PhD student, but you're not employed. Tomorrow, you are going to finish your PhD and you will require employment, right? So if you have good contacts, you have good collaborations, you may uh, land up with a job before you, you know, even submit your thesis or even defend your viva. So keep that collaborative spirit. I tell my students the same thing, yet you need to have collaboration. So two of my students, they are still need to submit the thesis. They are, one is going to submit in the next two months and the other in the <coughs> next six months. Both, have got, both, have the, uh, both of them have got postdoctoral opportunities. One who is uh, uh, going to go to uh, Stanford University and other who is going to go to Texas University. They have landed with uh, a postdoctoral fellow fellowships. Okay? So like I said, there is no one mantra. The PhD, your PhD journey is a process. Of course, it's a process. It's, it's going to be, there are going to be lot, lots of ups and downs. But your <clears throat> biggest and your most important companion is your guide. Okay, and that guide will become the most trusted person. The last sentence that I want to say, uh, Dr. Kare ma'am, okay. So my guide, uh, who was, who, is a, who retired as a very senior scientist from National Center for Cell Sciences from where I did my PhD. She is now my colleague because she's heading the Symbiosis Center of Stem Cell Research. So today, my guide, with whom I worked for almost seven to eight years of my life, is my colleague. And that level of bonding and that level of communication, I don't think so I'll ever find in anybody else. First as a guru and now as a friend. Okay? Thank you so much. Yeah.